Today's topic is coming from a player that literally does not use any resurrection monsters. I don't have Vanessa. I don't have Iona. Not a Michelle user. I don't have Light Pioneer. The only resurrection monster I actually have is Light Garuda. And I don't even use him for the res. It's nice, yeah. But I use him just as a light tank and literally just for decreasing skill cooldowns. But today I want to talk about the current event going on and what to do with resurrection monsters. I think the nerf bat was a little too hard. If you like my videos and like my content, hit the sub button, hit the like button, hit that bell dingy dingy thing so you know when I post a video. Let's go, baby. Tip of the day. Let's quickly talk about this event. A lot of people ask me which side to go to, the dark chocolate box or the white chocolate box. I'm more of a salty guy, so I go for potato chips. The more you know. No, but seriously, which side is better? It comes down to two things. If you have current monsters that you were trying to max awaken, or if you're trying to build a whole bunch of other monsters for Galagos, then you will want to do the white chocolate box. Because you need the magic essence, the breath of life, and the gold to awaken it all. Now, if you want a balance of everything, and you want a chance to get dupes for monsters you have, or new monsters, then you will want to do the dark chocolate box on the left. Now, I'm going to tell you what the best value is, because it's a huge difference. First of all, the best value in farming this event so that means you're doing Karo's dungeons as much as you can. That's the best value. You'll get other stuff just from playtime reward, daily requests, repeat requests, and going and defeating the world boss field event. Now the most valuable material out of the dark, the white, and the hearts is the hearts. But the thing we need the most is dark chocolate. But if you look at the values of the material, for dark you only need 100 dark chocolates, 30 white, and 30 hearts. For the white chocolates, you need 150 darks, 200 whites, and 80 hearts. Now, if you're lacking materials, which you probably are, you can go to Castlin and go to the Event Currency Manager, and you go to the Exchange Chocolate tab, and you can exchange between all three material. As all you need to farm is hearts. Because if you look at this closely, you get four dark chocolates for one heart, you only get two for one white chocolate. You get two white chocolate for one heart, but you need three white chocolates to get one heart. So what I suggest to do is go to repeat requests and do the repeat request that is the Karos dungeon, the dangerous challenge. You're going to be getting essence dungeon tickets and you farm Karos as much as you can. You need six tickets of Path of Growth to get 50 white chocolates, but you only need three tickets of Karos to get 60 hearts. And I'll break down the calculations for you. You only need 25 hearts to get 100 dark chocolate. Where with white chocolate, you need 50 of those to get 100 dark chocolate. In the exchange shop, you can exchange 50 hearts for 100 white chocolate. You can run Karos three times, which is 42 magic essence, by the way. Trade in 50 hearts and get 100 white chocolate. Where you would have had to run Path of Growth 12 times to get the same amount of white chocolate. So total for dark chocolate boxes is actually only 70 hearts. With the white chocolate box over here, 217 and a half hearts you need three times as much as the dark chocolate if you did dark chocolate three times instead of doing white one three mystical scrolls if they are all three star that's 60 shards which is 60 breath of life you exchange not to mention you're getting legendary scroll pieces so if you're doing the white chocolate over the dark technically you're only getting 60 more breath of life the gold if you need it and double the magic essence so if you want value for your buck Farm the dark chocolate boxes. If you're trying to max awaken and level up current monsters that you have, do the white chocolate. The more you know, the more you know. All right, so resurrection monsters, right? That's what the main video is about. In the last patch, Revivers got a huge nerf back. Now, Comp to Us did give free restores, and that is very easily convenient for you to reset those monsters. However, Coming from someone who doesn't even use these revived monsters, I feel like the nerf bat was extremely too hard on these players. And technically kind of just defeats the purpose of resurrection monsters altogether. The only thing resurrection monsters are typically good for right now is resing your monsters in Battlefield or in Galago's Ruins after you pull a mob pack. 
But in a main team comp in PvE or PvP, there's no reason to bring them anymore. Now, the double revive meta was, in my opinion, the reason why they got a huge nerf bat. I totally agree that something needed to happen, but this nerf bat was extremely too hard. So what they did to the revives is they extremely lowered the amount of health that the monster comes back with. So seeing revivers in PvP, and along with the nerf to HP revival, they also get a res sickness, which makes them unresable for a certain amount of period of time. Now what's funny is that the res sickness doesn't even matter, it's just a bigger nerf bat to you. The amount of health that someone comes back with, those monsters legitimately even get one shot right when they get rest. And their skills are off cooldown so they can't really do anything, so it's kind of a big issue. Because this eliminates a lot of monsters from the game. And these are significant monsters. Monsters you may have selected with a natural 5 star scroll, like the Vanessa Chisun Bastet scroll. Or maybe you picked it with your natural 5 star select summon. Or you actually bought the pass because you wanted the pieces to Vanessa. These are just all examples why probably people could be mad at the res nerf. Now there's still some revived monsters that are good, but the majority of them are now not really usable. Talasha is still good. She's a dark nat 5 though. Beta is kind of meh now. Light Pioneer Nagong's value definitely dropped, but is still good. However, it's a light nat 5 and is the only person that can technically res your summoner. However, buffs can be stripped, stolen, removed. He does heal after he reses that team member, but still, his values definitely dropped. When Archangel only revives with 10% HP, however, he does give them a heal over time. But 10% HP, that's literally one shot. It's so easy to counter the resers. And they have res sickness cooldown after that. In my opinion, what we had before, the health percentage on revives. It was definitely high, but currently it's way too low. I feel like comp to us should increase back the HP that is given when they are revived to somewhat of a midpoint, right in the middle of where it was and where it is now, and just increase the resurrection sickness. Make it so that monsters in PvP can't be resurrected again for another 3 minutes. That will make resurrection monsters come somewhat back into the light, but not be too crazy. Because at this point right now, I couldn't see any resurrection monster being legitimately good in a standard team comp. And that's it for today's video. I just want to get the info out there about the event and my opinion on resurrections. Like I said, I don't really use any resurrection monsters. However, I do feel like they got a huge nerf bat. Tell me what your thoughts are in the comments below. And if you like all my content, sub, like, ding a ding a bell. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.